Okay, welcome to part three of this Earth to Mars video series that I'm trying to put together. And in this video, I've already taken the time, uh, just to save time, to go ahead and set up TransX as you saw me do in the uh, first and second part. What I wanted to point out in this part is this time I have a vessel set up here at uh, KSC, the Kennedy Space Center, you know, Cape Canaveral. And if we take a look quickly at Map MFD, you can see here, you know, that we're at a very different latitude. You know, Wide Awake is down here at almost uh, zero degrees, uh, you know, latitude in Cape Kennedy, or did I say that right? Cape Canaveral, rather is up here, you know, at a much higher latitude. Now, if possible, whenever you're taking off and getting into orbit, it's ideal if you can have a 90 degree heading when you take off and get into orbit. That way you're getting maximum benefit uh, from the rotation of the planet and it will mean that you'll consume the least amount of fuel. So it's interesting to note that by being at a different latitude and being on a slightly different day, in this, in this instance we're November 29th instead of November 26th, but this was still within the uh, time frame of the Curiosity rover. They had about I think it was about a three week launch window. So by being at a different latitude and just by using a slightly different date, notice that my heading is 86.36. That's much closer to 90 degrees than I was getting from uh, down at White Awake where I was only getting, you know, what was it, 122 degrees, I think is what I came up with. And what you'll notice, let me go ahead and set the clock back to real time. If I just wait a little bit, let me go ahead and press T to warp time ahead just by a factor of 10. You'll notice that the heading is actually getting even closer to 90 degrees. In fact, if I got to warp 100, I can get the heading all the way to 90 degrees. So I can actually get a perfect launch heading just by being at a different latitude. Let me uh, get this recentered. There it is. Now we're at 88 degrees. And we're coming up here almost 90 degrees. In fact, this would be about the best time to launch. Just a few uh just a few minutes before you would hit that, you know, 90 degree heading, you know, that way you'd have time to reach half orbital velocity. So that was, that's just something I wanted to point out in this video when you're working with the eject orientation, it will, the best eject orientation you can get, and again, again the best is going to be 90 degrees, but you can't always get a 90 degree uh, launch heading depending on, you know, the date of your launch, depending on the latitude of your launch and it also depends on which approach you're taking to Mars and let me show you what I mean remember in the in the Wide Awake International scenario I was using the approach out to Mars let me do a change variable here where it would take me um, out to this point where I would leave Earth go out to orbit and I would rendezvous or you know meet up with Mars over here on this side but in order to save a little bit of time in this scenario I have it set up where I would use a little bit more fuel it's actually quite a bit more but I would rendezvous or meet up with Mars over here and the amount of time that that would take would be let's just do a quick calculation it's 56062 
minus 55 894 so this would just take us 168 days instead of the uh, 350 I think it was 354 days that I had down there at the wide awake so what's the trade-off well the trade-off is I'm it's taking me approximately half as much time to get there but I'm using more fuel and notice my encounter velocity is 8,000 you know 400 versus the other one was 3,000 something so this would require you know an enormous amount of braking energy once I got to the other side but more importantly in this particular section I just wanted to point out this um, this eject orientation whenever you're setting up your plan for getting to Mars you want to try to get the best eject orientation that you can possibly get and something in the neighborhood of you know 90 degrees but plus or minus on either side you know maybe as much as 120 or 130 degrees this way or maybe you know 70 degrees or so on the other side that's kind of the uh, eject orient that's the that's the eject orientation that you would ultimately want to go with if you have an eject orientation that sends you around the planet backwards or over the poles then it'll work but it's going to use a lot more fuel to do that so one thing you may actually need to do is find out when in time the best eject orientation is like right now and then do a quick save so that you get the MJD and then you can load that quick save file and copy the date and then paste it into some other file so that the next time you set up your trip to Mars you don't have to guess about when the best eject orientation is going to be in fact that's exactly what I did for this scenario that you're looking at I found out when the best eject orientation was going to be which is 90 degrees here in just a few more seconds it'll be exactly 90 degrees and I saved that file I quick saved it and then when I uh, loaded it or when I copied that MJD out of the quick save file I basically just subtracted I think about 15 minutes that way I could reuse that same date and time and then get into orbiter, have time to set up my MFDs, and then plus leave me enough time to get to the ideal heading of 90 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's going to end uh, this section, this part of this video, where we talk about, where I wanted to just explain a little bit more about the eject orientation.